This is like heaven for wooden boat building. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. If you're new to the channel, I want to welcome you. And if you're one of our returning subscribers, welcome back to the show. This episode, we've got something really special. I've traveled about 250 miles north of the boat works to the upper peninsula of Michigan. We're on the shores of Lake Huron, and we're going to be visiting the Great Lakes Boat Building School. It's one of four schools in the United States where you can learn how to restore wooden boats and marine technology. We're going to be talking to Tom Coates. He's one of the directors at the school. This is Tom. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, I'm Tom Coates. I'm the director of development here at Great Lakes Boat Building School. Uh, we're in Cedarville, Michigan, in the Upper Peninsula. The Lachino Islands are a boating mecca. There's 36 islands. We're right here in the middle of them. Great Lakes Boat Building School was founded in 2006. It's some local residents with the foresight and vision to really kind of nurture boat building and restoration in this area because of such a rich heritage and history. It goes back to the, the 1920s and even before the uh, first Chris Craft dealer ever is just down the road in Hessel, Michigan. Uh, E.J. Murtaugh was founded in 1925. So these group of visionaries pulled the resources together and wanted to continue the traditions of boat building and restoration here in the area. So you're gonna take us on a tour of the school? Yes, I'll, t I'll show you around, let you see the facilities we have here. How big is the building that you have here, the school facilities? The school facility here is about 12,000 square feet. And as you'll see when we go through, we're getting tight on space. And as I mentioned, we're, we're looking to grow. So this summer, we're actually going to be breaking ground on a 10,000 square foot marine technology center uh, to the east of the building here. Uh, so we'll be breaking ground this summer. We had a successful capital campaign so that we're going to be able to increase our capacity to, to 50 students because the demand is in the industry right now. Wow. And you were saying before, I might have missed it, but you said you have basically how many students at any one time? Yeah, we our enrollment's up to 24 students. We had 12 students in the Comprehensive Career Boat Building Program, and we have 12 students in the Marine Service Technology Program where they're really wrenching, working on engines, uh, and we're affiliated with Mercury. We're considered a Mercury University. We're a, we're a private 501c3 uh, nonprofit entity. Okay. And and our goal is when we say we sell a boat or we sell something, we plow the plow the money back in to try to keep tuition as low as possible for our students. And the school's so, only you said 16 years old, uh, about the about somewhere, somewhere around years there. Old. Right? Yep. Yep. And it started more of a hobby, more as a uh, boat restoration in this area and, uh, and the wooden boat work that was being done was more of like a kind of a hobby sort of thing, but now has transitioned more to to actual uh, private industry demand, right? To to keep the boats going because some of the boats are still made. Is, right. is that right? Right. Yeah. This in this area, there's uh, a lot of the uh, vintage 1920s, 30s boats that are still in the water. They have that mystique or mystique that they go back to the days of rum running. And so um, those boats are still out and active. It's something unique to the Great Lakes of Michigan. It's really not, you don't see this per se on the East Coast or Chesapeake or maybe even the Pacific Northwest, right? It's unique to the fresh water yep. of the Great Lakes. Correct, correct. And we're, we are the Great Lakes Boat Building School. We are the only school in the Great Lakes region. So we have, we have placement of students in Wisconsin, all throughout Michigan, even down to Kentucky. We have some students in Texas. Uh, there's, it's just really a growing industry. There's no typical student that comes to our school. We have some students right out of high school, 18 years old. We have a lot of career changers that maybe went, were in a career, uh, found out they didn't like it, and then found us and found their dream job. And we're about 30% of our population are, uh, are veterans, military veterans. And there's some just great programs, GI Bill, that kind of thing. That they're able to use they're to, able to, to use. come here. And right now we have a, a student in the wood boat building program that's 72 years old. Right. And it's just a great mix for those to kind of mentor the younger students. Sure. Just like a normal university, the school has classrooms and workshops. They're almost like laboratories. A lofting board. And what our, our instructor and students will do is a, it's almost like a three-dimensional view of the lines off a um, Indian River skiff, which is what our students built. We build right now. You can hear the tapping in the background. 
When I come inside the main boat workshop, I'm reminded of a bakery. The familiar sights and sounds and smells, you just can't mistake it. There's hammering and chiseling, and you can smell the sawdust in the air. If there was heaven for a wooden boat builder, this is what it must look like. Look at this. Yeah, the, uh, the students are split up into groups of three, and right now they're um, building their Indian River skiffs. So this, so this area, right, this workshop right here is your primary workshop? Right. Is that right? Yeah, this is the, the comprehensive career boat building shop. Uh, when we started the school, it encompassed the whole building. So what does one of these weigh? What does the boat weigh? The, these boats weigh in roughly uh, 168 pounds in the traditional version. 168 pounds. We did a uh, composite cedar, cedar strip uh, plank without the framing, so on and yeah. so forth, that was 108 pounds. 108 pounds. You're telling me this weighs 168 pounds? Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could... Yeah, I guess that's probably right. Amazing. What's the lightest boat you've ever made? Cedar strip canoes, uh, used to do a uh, 17 foot 6 inch lead bird straight out of the canoe yeah. craft and it would weigh 74. 74. It's humbling to hear this because I tried to make a 9 foot dinghy that was as light as possible and I only got to 78 pounds. If you're interested, check out that episode. It's an absolute joy to be in the presence of a master craftsman. So this is what it looks like beforehand. There's nothing on there. All right, so this, this is where the shear plank goes, right? Exactly. It's the final plank that gets put on the hull when you're building it up, correct? Call it the, the We call it a whiskey plank. You call it the whiskey uh, plank. We celebrate that plank going on a boat uh, with a shot of whiskey. Right, whiskey because that's a celebration the boat's done. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. So, so this is what it looks like beforehand. This is what it looks like once the plank is put on there. Yes, exactly. Look at that, that is fantastic. Well, you can see this boat over here, they're actually fitting the last uh, shoe plank to the hull. If you've enjoyed this episode, do me a favor, hit the like button and leave a comment below. And I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Hey, don't take my word for it. Watch a couple episodes and see what you think. Your support makes this channel possible. Thank you. I want to ask you a question. So a lot of my viewers are building their own boats or restoring their own boats. Now, a lot of them are fiberglass projects, but some of them are actually building wooden boats from the lofting lines up, right? They're just plugging away on it. And these are monumental projects, right? Whether they're a skiff or whether they're a big boat, do you have any advice for someone who is working on one of these type of projects? Is there anything you tell your students about seeing the job through or the motivation to keep going? Because it's one thing when you have a group of people kind of working on it, right? But you've probably done some by yourself where it takes a lot of personal motivation to kind of finish the project. You have any advice for somebody? Yeah, Rome wasn't built in the day, they say. It does take time, it takes a lot of patience and research your materials thoroughly. Uh, not all materials are created equal, whether right, it be right. uh, you know, Cicaflex versus 5200. Right. They all have applications in the industry. Make sure you use the right material. Right, right you just can't use anything, right? You gotta yeah. kind of put some forethought um, into you know, it. Everything has certain requirements. Yeah. Uh, wood is difficult to find good quality. Uh, other than that, you know, patience and, and uh, uh, measure three times and cut Good. once. <laughs> I, uh, is that, this, this is a lesson that I have to learn all the time. Yeah, tell me about it. Uh, I'm constantly, if you watch my videos and you see the work I'm doing, I'm a, you would be shocked and appalled at my <laughs> terrible cuts and how nothing goes together. I watched what, one of your videos. Have good. you? Yeah, yeah. You've seen one of my videos. Yeah, you were, you were uh, working on the album. I've worked on a couple of them. Yeah, myself. yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, one of the reasons that I... I've always been interested in wooden boats, but I kind of feel like I don't have the aptitude and the attention to detail to to really do some wooden boat restorations. Uh, I, I, I've read about it. I have an idea how to do it, and uh, 
but I just don't think that I'm, like my cuts aren't precise enough. It, it won't look nice enough. And one of the reasons I like fiberglass is, I, I always tell people, wood is good, but fiberglass is forgiving. And for a guy like me, you can cover up all your mistakes with a little bit of epoxy or a little bit of uh, extra fiberglass cloth. You sand it down, you paint it, no one will ever know that this thing didn't line up. There's a huge gap that didn't make any sense, you know. And, but I feel like with wood, that that's not necessarily the case, right? It is not necessarily the case. Right? So, Everyone's you know, going to see all of your imperfections and your defects, right? To a certain degree. Yes. It's about precision, right? It is. It yeah. Is. And it takes time to develop. I mean, we started out with the first projects. The students started with as a step stool. Yeah, they look uh, pretty heinous, right? <laughs> they do. But, you know, we started them out with the hand tools. They don't touch a power tool. Uh, you know, it's because that, they're learning eye-hand coordination. Sure. And how to use the tools. Sure. And if you can take and cut a line with a chisel, sure. uh, then you can cut it on a saw. Sure, sure. Or, it, you know, if you can cut a compound angle with a, with a Japanese hand saw, sure. hand saw uh, then you can cut it on a table saw. On a table saw. Or, or something Yeah, else. that's probably good advice. It, it, and there's less chance of, you know, drastic, you know, uh, body parts moving. Right. You know, fast moving steel right. implements that way. But, uh, you know, the eye hand coordination is critical. Yeah. And it takes a while to build that up. Yeah, yeah. So we always start out at the beginning. You know, with hand tools. Hand tools. What is this called? The mill room. This is the so mill room. Most of our machine work so that we you know, kind of keep the dust levels down in the other portions of the shop. It's comforting to see that many of the ideas and some of the principles that I use in Motor City Boatworks were also used by such a professional boat shop. There's a steaming box that's used to bend lumber very similar to the hot box I created for my rubber rubbing strakes. Motor City Boat Works is now on Patreon. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider supporting the channel. My commitment to you is that every dollar from every Patreon will go solely towards doing stories on real amateur boat building, real amateur boat restoration, and stories of boat motivation. These episodes would not be possible without your support. Thank you. Questions. One of the questions I have is that I noticed you are using West Systems Epoxy, is that correct? Yes. Why are you using West Systems Epoxy and not some of the other epoxy, some of the newer epoxies that have come out in say the last five to 10 years? Well, I use West Systems Epoxy, so I'm just curious if your reasons are similar to mine. Personal opinion, it's, it's one of my favorites. I, I, I knew Jan and Mead uh, and I've used it since day one in my business uh -huh. um, so i'm very familiar with the product i know it's ins and outs mm -hmm. the product's been around a long time right so it's it's well established we we know that we're not going to have any any surprises right which when you're putting together a couple hundred thousand dollars into a boat sure uh, you don't want surprises sure um so not that any other epoxy is good bad or otherwise right. it's more of a personal preference right. Something you get comfortable with and you kind of... Yeah. I, I like it because of its consistency. I get very consistent, very consistent results, results. And my skill level is not that great. My attention to detail is not that great. And I find it to be very forgiving for a guy like myself. The instructions are relatively easy to use. And it just kind of... It just kind of works yeah, when I'm exactly. using it. I, so I never have a problem with it. They have, they have their, their product that I prefer the most. Their, their resin hardener combination is the 105 slash 207. Right. I prefer the 207. They call it special coatings hardener. Right. But it is, it's, it's slightly more uh, moisture proof. The, the 207 is more moisture resistant. Sure. Uh, it's slightly more UV resistant. Yeah. Um, and those are key important things. And I like the workability of the 207. Yeah. And if I decide after I co put a coating of epoxy on something, and I really like the looks of it, and I decide to varnish it instead, yeah. I'm better off with the, yeah, with the epoxy. Yeah, yeah. Slightly stronger. All right, Tom, what do we got here? This is the uh, center console for the Huron 20 that we looked at earlier. This was a modification in the design. Our lead instructor, Matt Edmondson, wanted to make it a center console bolt. Look at the marine services and repair side of the curriculum is even more impressive with specialty classrooms designed for electrical troubleshooting and engine repair. Everything that's in your house is in a bolt. So the marine service tech pro, uh, technicians got to know how to work on things like air conditioning, plumbing, electronics. And then Clever, so you can do all of your practicing stern drive work. Yep. Exactly, yeah. Look I mean, at that. They, they've taken this off, put it back together. 
Uh, this this portion of the boat probably has the world record for the number of times it's been winterized in the oil change. <laughs> Our relationship with Mercury is really good because each student will get a technician number and so that they, they can go in, they can um, mock order parts that are needed for a repair. They'll set up a laptop right to, to the engine and talk to it so that they, so much is electronics. Right. And uh, that's really valuable. They come out with some entry level certifications. Right. As we conclude our tour of the school, it's just obvious that this is a well thought out and comprehensive marine education program. It's been an amazing tour of the Great Lakes Boat Building School. Tom, I want to thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We really enjoyed seeing everything that you've got here. If someone wants to find out some more information about your school, what's the best way for them to contact you? The best way to contact me is uh, by email or give us a call at the school here, 906-484-1081 and or stop by again friday afternoons at two are usually when we do our tours and we thank you for your interest and really enjoyed hosting you here at the school today thank, thank you so much i just think that this is every wooden boat builder's dream school if you ever wanted to learn about wooden boat building this is the place to go if you have a question about this episode please leave a comment below or feel free to contact me at the motor city boat works website or via the email on the homepage of my YouTube channel. I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.